Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy here diving into some juicy tech drama today. You've probably seen those leaked scores floating around for the new MediaTek Dimensity 9500 chip, right? And it's going head to head with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2. At first glance, it looks like MediaTek's getting smoked. But hold up, let's not jump to conclusions. I'm gonna break this down for you step by step, like we're just chilling and chatting about phones. Trust me, there's more to this story, and it might not be as bad as it seems. Let's get into it. First off, these early Geekbench 6 scores popped up, and they're from tests on actual phones. The Dimensity 9500 was running on a Vivo X300, and it scored 2352 in single core, that's like how fast it handles one task at a time, and 7129 in multi-core, which is juggling a bunch of stuff. Now compare that to the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2 in a Galaxy S26 Edge, 3393 single core, and a whopping 11,515 multi-core. Whoa, that's like 61% faster in multi-core. If you're a Snapdragon fan, you're probably fist pumping right now. But if you're rooting for MediaTek, ouch, that hurts. I mean, is this the end of the battle before it even starts? Okay, but here's where I get super curious and a bit skeptical. These scores might be totally misleading, and I've got some solid reasons why. Let's debunk this like detectives, all right? Number one, and this is huge. If you dig into the details of that Dimensity 9500 score, it says it's based on ARM V8 architecture. Wait, what? That doesn't make sense at all. Their older chip, the Dimensity 9400, is on ARM V9, which is newer and better. Are they seriously downgrading? No way, that sounds fishy. I call fake on this leak. It's probably not the real deal, guys. MediaTek wouldn't step backward like that. So if the foundation is wrong, the whole score could be bogus. Mind blown, right? Even if we set that aside, there's more. Both chips in these tests weren't running at full blast, like not even close. The Dimensity 9500 was clocked lower than what it's supposed to hit. Its main core is aimed at 4.20 gigahertz, but it wasn't there yet. And the Snapdragon? It was tested at just 4.00 gigahertz when it can crank up to 4.74 gigahertz. That's a massive difference. These early tests are basically just checking if the system doesn't crash or overheat. They're not about max performance. It's like watching two athletes do a lazy warm-up jog. You're not seeing their sprint times, they're just loosening up. Chip makers and phone companies are still tweaking the software, cooling, and power stuff before launch, so why get excited or bummed out over this? It's too soon. Now, thinking bigger picture, this MediaTek versus Qualcomm rivalry is fire, isn't it? Qualcomm's got those custom cores that seem to have an edge and raw power, which is cool to see, even in these underclock tests. But winning isn't just about one benchmark score. Nah, the real story comes later with things like how well the phone stays cool during long gaming sessions, or how the software optimizes everything. What about battery life? The Dimensity might shine there, sipping less power while still delivering, or graphics for your PUBG marathons, or AI smarts for editing photos. Geekbench is quick and dirty. It doesn't test that sustained stuff. I'm dying to see full reviews when these hit the shelves. So bottom line, friends, don't buy into the hype or the doom from these leaks just yet. It's like peeking at a movie trailer. Exciting, but not the full film. MediaTek could surprise us, or Snapdragon might dominate. Who's gonna win? I don't know, but I'm hyped to find out. What do you think? Drop in the comments. Team MediaTek or Team Qualcomm? Smash that like if this cleared things up, subscribe for more tech breakdowns, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.